I got your back. I do. You reach your full potential as a human being. Yeah. And it's, it's, uh, a lot of you know that, uh, well, I mean, okay, so besides being a life coach, you also host Miss Entrepreneur, which is uh, a weekly show on Wednesdays. I just remember today at 1 o'clock, and I was like, great, okay. Fine. I know, Whatever. you know, it's on a show, yeah. and you know, I wanted to kick my own ass, because yeah. I was like, why didn't I tell people on the show today that I was going to be at Refar, and I couldn't have like, <laughs> your show, but yeah. I have in the past, um, and, and I really want to congratulate you, because I know it takes a lot of effort, a lot of time, a lot of energy, um, you know, the crowd's always going to vary, but yeah. you, like, you I cry, I cry on Fridays. That's what I, I reserve Fridays for tears. Nate calls me on Thursday and tells me everything that I did wrong on Wednesday, and then I cry on Friday. It's all right. It's cool. Yeah. Well, I, I just, I just want to say, I mean, you've been doing this for about a year now, and it takes a lot of discipline and determination to Eight kind of... months, and then we're going to be at our 30th show, like two shows. So. Yay! Yay! That's, that's a huge accomplishment. I started Rise Above... Um, which is what he's talking about. There's a, a project called Miss Entrepreneur Role Model Search. And basically, the, I created this concept, again, going back to my producer skills, right? So I left LA, I came back to San Antonio, started doing coaching and all this stuff, and then it, it, it's like, oh my God, I gotta get back into hosting and production again. And I was like, screw it, I'm just gonna start my own stuff. Biz so, dev moment number yeah. three. I know you're hosting Miss Entrepreneur Weekly, but I would love, actually, you're, you're, already, you, you're already agreed. You signed the contract, you're gonna be here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be here, yeah. And, and then, <laughs> just so you you know, guys, Rise Above is for women who are uh, have their own business, who have tapped into their power, their passion, and their purpose. And I want to congratulate the girls that are doing Raise the Whisper. I personally have dealt with sexual trauma myself, and a few months ago uh, was compelled to start a podcast called The Sacral Circle, and it is a self-love safe haven for women to collectively, openly, and lovingly heal sexual trauma and abuse. And so I, I commend you because this is a, a, a major problem that that all of us have, and um, aside from my coaching, I also do hands-on like body work and healing, and to heal trauma, you really have to deal with it on the mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical level, and people don't really understand how to deal with this, and not only that, but it is so crucial, I, I also teach sex and intimacy courses, mm -hmm. and in, in order for us to really heal, um, you know, women are disconnected from their sexuality and sensuality for so many different reasons, and, and it's, it's a very powerful thing and uh, it's sacred and that's another thing I'm here to restore the truth around what sex actually is so if you're in a relationship you can take sex to cosmic levels if you are connecting in the manner that 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 you are intended to be connecting with another human being and and so I'm not saying that you can't go out there and have your fun but just know when you let in somebody in your space I don't care if you're a guy or girl you have an electromagnetic biofield okay y'all this is just look this up and this person's essence and all of their trauma and all of their whatever they are buzzing rubs off on you and you take it every single time. Okay? So we should be very selective about who we want to lay in bed with. Woo! Hey, my bad. I got you. I got your bad. I got you. I got your back. Yeah, I got brain you. waves, heart waves, sound waves, everything is a wave. And you cannot have a crest without a trough. And if you cannot deal with the fact that every once in a while you're gonna have to you're gonna dip down here, if you can learn how to be cool with the uncomfortable. Oh yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and then and then start to reframe it. When shit is hitting the yeah, fan, y'all, the way I look at it now, I'm like, woo. That's some gold up in this like moment right now in my life. I need to put on my like scuba gear. I need to like dig. I need to be an archaeologist. Like yeah. I, I need to be a curious this, this observer. This is something I think about because uh, um, Nate, 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 and MT. I mean, I wish I wish Dom was here because I like I like picking on Dom and stuff like that. But you guys know, right? We're on a mission. You know what I mean, right? We're going to do something really cool here in San Antonio. I, I'm bringing that up. You guys are nodding, which is fine with me. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but but. I feel like that, that's really cool. It's, it's great to have those kinds of people um, in your life, uh, and and good things are happening. You know, we're, we're we're getting different opportunities. But what's funny for me is the reason why I don't worry about even if we get to a pretty good level, like even if um, you know we reach reach some goals, I'll leak a little goal as tech theater by you know early 2018 or earlier, probably earlier. I think we can do it. I think we can, we're going to do it. But um, even, even when we get there, you want to get to ask the theater? Yeah, yeah. Have yeah, yeah. Okay. To have a yeah. show in the yeah. in, to, to have a show in the That'd be cool. theater. But even before we get there, uh, or even when we get there, I'm not really worried about like uh, someone saying, "Oh, you know, I can just 
just duplicate this show. I think I can do it. Do you know why? Like the main thing that I've noticed, the hardest part that uh, most people don't have, they have zero ability to deal with um, the low moments. Most people have zero ability to deal with the low moments in conversation, in people, in life, in events. And if you don't have that, you're going to break apart at that moment every single time. I know because I've broken apart at that moment, uh, you know, at different points in my life, just decided, oh, you know, this isn't the right thing, I'm just walk away. But training yourself in that so that no matter what, uh, what, what happens, you're able to reframe, like you said, and that's the exact thing. I had a phone call, a couple, I mean, it happens every day, but I have phone calls every day where if I can't reframe my my anticipation, it wasn't with you, Legacy City, we did talk, it wasn't with you. <laughs> but, but if, if you're not able to reframe, like if I wasn't able to reframe those situations, I would have missed an opportunity. A, not a small opportunity, like a huge opportunity. If I wasn't able to reframe sometimes, I'm like, I don't feel like going to this place. <laughs> I, it, it would have it would have changed exactly where I, where I landed. Different opportunities. Getting in here, this would have been one of those opportunities that I would I would have missed if I wasn't able to change my insights and say, hey, you know what, like you need to go approach this person, you need to be able to talk to this person, yeah. you need to realize that even though the conversation didn't go exactly the way you wanted, do you believe in, in the optimism? Do you believe that this is where you're meant to be? Yeah. And, it, and are you okay with it not be, being that, and are you okay with not being afraid of that? Afraid that maybe you made a mistake, afraid that maybe it's not gonna work out. And yeah. even if it doesn't work out, maybe it's a learning situation. That's how, it's, yeah. very, it's very that's weird. How, honestly, y'all, that's another thing where we get stuck is when we're trying to make a decision about something, and we're like, yeah, but if I do this, and that this might happen, and then I don't know, and, it, and then you can just end up not making a decision at all. And the way I look at it is, there is no wrong decision. There is no, just get it in your head. Even though there might be repercussions that in your perception are bad, then you need to experience that bad situation from making that decision. The regret kills our vitality. It's a trap, y'all. Booby traps, regret, guilt, woulda, shoulda, coulda. And I'm not saying to not do it. It's very normal, it's very human of us to do that. But y'all, we are more than a mind, body, human being. We are a spirit being too. And that, that piece of you knows who the F you are, knows what the F you're made of, and knows what you're actually capable of. And there, and, and I know you hear that whisper sometimes, but then the other voice is so loud. Why? Because you've been feeding the black wolf. You've been feeding the dark wolf. There's the light wolf and the dark wolf. It's like the dark Vader and the Yoda or, you know, the angel and the devil or whatever you want to call it. Y'all, we all have that within us. Mm. We have to learn how to tame that voice. We have to listen to it. Don't shut it up. Don't ignore it. Mm. Lean into it. What? What? What do you want? <laughs> it's like, you know, yeah. it's like agitated. There's a piece of you that's like afraid of something. Yeah. So instead of ignoring the fear, let's lean into the fear. Let's oh, yeah. love it to, to light. I love that so much. Lean into the fear. That's going to be my motto. Literally, I'm not even joking. Uh, like, I did a little experience, experiments with myself. Uh, I tried different things out during the week. That's going to be my motto for the rest of the week. Lean into the fear.